So we look at Genesis the 10th chapter uh, As we're about to get into We look at Nimrod And we look at These ancient lands of America Alright we, we look at uh, The Temple of the Warriors In Central America In these locations these ancient temples along this 90 degree west line. We have to take into account these lands, the Americas. And when you look at the flag standard for the Americas, and we look at the, this ancient text, this palette, the Narmer's palette, when you look at Narmer's palette and we look at this ancient artifact, and it shows Amuru and the western sunset lands of the serpent. And so when we look at these western sunset lands of the serpent, we connect these lands with the Tolteca. And when we look at the Tolteca, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, the mound builders. And when we look at these mound builders, Tolteca, and we look at Mexico, it says here, the very name for Mexico Messi, when you look at Messiah, is derived from a Hebrew word for a future king, crown prince. So we look at Messiah, Strong's number 4899, and the name of a Totecan chief, Mexico, which means the anointed one is here. When we look at the anointed one and uh, the dark star, the black star, Ikua, when you look at chocolate, the naming of chocolate, we look at Akua and the maze god and the god of the merchants. And when you come back, it comes back to this Amuru. And when we look at whether it's in South America, the connection with uh, the naming of America and this, this serpent. And when we look at this serpent, the plum serpent, Gukamats, right? The Temple of the Warriors, this location is, is an important location of uh, this 90 degree west line. When we look at the star systems of the mother's child, all right? So when you see here, uh, Amuru, the land from the western sunset lands on this Narmer's palette. That's what that object was here, right? So when we look at um, Amuru in the Western Sunset Land, it brings us back to these people known as the Sea People. And when you look at the Sea People and throughout the history of America, whether it's the Punic, Carthaginians, um, the Canaanites, the Philistines, the Phoenicians, we understand the coastline. This ancient coastline where the sun sets, right? When you see these sea peoples, you see the headdress, you see the connection with this Indios. When you look at Indios, this is the foreign lands, the foreign locations of outside of what we know today as uh, the Middle East and uh, the 30 degrees east line of longitude, which is in the Nile Valley. So when we look at the Nile Valley and the Indus Valley uh, civilizations, they talked about these Asiatic invaders coming from the Americas into these particular lands. And so when we look at the time of the kingship of Solomon and David, we see the golden age of these individuals who came into what was known as Misraim, Egypt, under Joseph. And Joseph would be the one to uh, deify Jacob, his father, Israel, in Egypt. And this was uh, personified and placed on the walls. You can see this in the walls uh, in the tomb of Beni Hassan, Kanuhotep, of these Asiatics. And their influence on the afterlife and their guidance on you know, the afterlife, showing that what they brought in uh, to the cultivation of what was the Nile Valley. When you see here, uh, the dealing with agriculture, animals, um, that was something that was brought in by a foreign culture into this region. So this is, we see the living and the dwelling amongst the animals and ghosts in this particular area. 
And we see here evidence of these ancient Amurakans leaving the Americas, navigating um, in their ships to do their merchantmen, to do their exchange as they did to deify Jacob, Israel, in this Genesis, in the book of Genesis, the 49th chapter and 50th verse under Joseph, who was king. So when we see uh, Shu, Joseph, Shu, the lion, the feline, the cat, the Leo, this is the coming into these homelands of the America. When you see Leo, the Virgo, the Libra, and the Scorpio, when you look at these uh, significances of the homeland, the home stretch, the, the, the fall, right? I'm talking about the fall, the fall times in these particular periods. So when you look at Narmer, Armuru, uh, the Western Sunset Lands, the ancient medicine men, the mound building culture, the mound building civilization, uh, this is what I'm talking about. So we're talking about the Americas. And when we look at this mound building culture here in the Americas, it goes back. You see here, the sea peoples. And when we look at these sea peoples, these sea peoples go back to the time of Joseph. And when we came into Egypt, which was known as the Hyksos period or this, this intermarried period, uh, when we came in to redeem the Nile Valley in a sense and unify the Nile Valley uh, for a period of time, right? We look at this intermarried period of uh, the Hyksos, right? When we look at the Hyksos, um, these Asiatics, one of the things you got to take in is the shepherds, the agriculture. And this is what we saw um, along with the headdress when you see the sea peoples of peoples from the, this same territory, not necessarily the same people, but from the same territory, showing the biblical connection in the histories uh, with uh, Israel and the land of Canaan. So when we look at Jacob's burial and this situation where Joseph, we look at Yosuf and Shu, Shu, the God, the God that holds up the sky, that trilogy and symbolism of that triangle, that trinity of mother, father, and child and the holding up of the sky um, comes from Joseph and the, uh, the use of the corn and the knowledge of maize and the seven years of storm um, that took place. When you look at the seven, the connection with the seven, uh, Sheba, Shavash, Sh 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 Shabir, and uh, corn is the connection with that mathematics, that, that quantitative mathematics. So when we look at the time frame of the month um, from going the, into the summer into Leo, and we look at Cancer, the month of Tammuz in the Hebrew, this is uh, this period of the ending of the summer uh, as we prepare for the pre-fall. So when you see the Virgo, um, the Libra, the Leo, and you look at Shu, the holder of the sky, and, and the personification of the, the lion uh, characteristic with the feline, the ferocity of the different deities of their protections. So when we look at the travelers and uh, the ships, and uh, the burial of Jacob, the mummies, the cocaine mummies, the distribution of corn, and other uh, major medicines. We're talking about real live medicine men. So when you look at medicine men, it, it deals with the Americas. But when you look at the, the most ancient form of medicine and healing and, and traveling, uh, when you look at things like missionaries and Red Cross, that comes from the Americas. And these shamans who would leave the, the different lands and travel, right? Bring, this is with the sign of the cross, right? The crusades and the use of the cross and its symbolism and the serpent, the goddess. Um, so when you look at uh, the trade of trees, the merchantmen, the god of merchants, 
right? Whether it's uh, Mercury or the different, whatever uh, civilization you're looking at this uh, through the lens of, when we look at um, the exchange of trade and traveling, sailors, sales, the book of sales, the receipts, it is these ancient uh, Asiatics who come into the lands of the Indus Valley, Samaria, and into the, the Nile Valley um, that we see in the cuneiform receipts holding record of their ancient travels and sale, bills of sales coming into these territories. So when you look at these walls, this is exactly what this is. This is um, these Asiatics coming into to these lands, into these areas. Um, when you look at the receipts, the cuneiform receipts, the bill of sales, uh, it is for these services and for the exchange of these tools and these different sciences that they brought in from the Americas into these particular areas. <clears throat> So when you look at the, the mound builders and um, the tools, the prehistoric tools going back to even to this period, um, we're talking about 6,000 B.C., 7,000, 8,000 B.C., even into those periods and times, these mounds were storehouses for different uh, sacred medicines and healing remedies. Um, so a lot of the ancient scriptures were actually hidden hymns or remedies or chants or songs to heal, um, <clears throat> which would be later taken as witchcraft and sorcery. So when you look at Pharmakia and how the demonizing of the praise and worship uh, was because of the remedies, right, were disguised through song, dance, and praise, right, and hidden esoterically in the scriptures so that way uh, the sacredness of these medicines and remedies would be protected and not misused um, as we see today big pharma taking advantage of a lot of the holistic practices trying to keep people from using those practices because it, it doesn't benefit them um, it, it, it doesn't create a medical patient for life as uh, the other uh, non-holistic practices do. So when you look at the ancient ways, right, the ancient people and how they, they function, when we look at the serpent and the goddesses and uh, the gods of merchants, the merchant gods, um, Ikua, Jesus, the, the sailors, um, the Moors, right? These are the ones that were responsible for the exchange of pharmaceutical remedies, right? And sometimes they have to be the ones to not make these things available for purchase, for sale, but protected under a sacred class of what we would call priests or Kohen. Um, so when we look at the, the, the priests and the Kohen and um, the trying to keep the purity of medicine and the, or the practice of medicine relevant, Uh, goes on, when you look at sin and um, when you look at health and sin and how religion in its ancient form was a remedy to prevent disease and uh, unhealthy behaviors that bring about certain disease. So when you look at the different practice of waiting to be married to engage in sexual intercourse, right? Um, and the advancement of contraceptives during the sexual revolution and how that created a high exposure and a development of what we see today of sexually transmitted diseases, which some men, many are uncurable, right? So once one... Uh, has a particular disease or ailment, sometimes they can become a patient of the pharmaceutical industry for life because of engaging in unnatural behavior, 
which some would, some religious people would call sin, right? But those of us that have a secular mind and not a religious understanding uh, or don't look at things in a religious lens or understanding, um, we look at unnatural behaviors and disease. The prevention of that uh, religion was originally instructed as a discipline to prevent disease. So when you look at the early forming of religion or Islam or any monotheistic principle or teaching, it is to not necessarily prevent people from experiencing pleasure, but ideally it was a medical discipline uh, to prevent disease or to prevent um, harm to the body by exposing your body to unnecessary um, behaviors, right? Pleasures. Um, so when you look at that, uh, the codices and the ancient teachings, the ancient medicine men, of the Americas, and how they demonized and made farming witchcraft. Um, so when you look at pharmaceuticals, it is the the medicines, the actual plants, the actual herbs um, that are, are the the medicine. However, we've been t- taken from the cultures, which you can say the culture is ideally the religion that forms the traditions of health. So when you look at religion, in a sense, it is a form of health care or as a practice of health or a discipline of us in, in a way you can look at it like that not saying that's what it is but you could you could argue that point when you look at medicine and uh, the codices and the, the connection with the greek gods uh and things of that nature let's see here So you see pharmacy, medicine, right? When you look at the scriptures, they are medicine. When you look at prescriptions, right? Understand scripture, a prescription, a script, right? The remedies, right? To heal, to save, to salvage someone, right? In a in an unhealthy condition. So when you look at pharmacy, pharmaceutical, and um, religious discipline, dogma, right? Scriptures are spells of medicine, right? That can either bless or curse, depending if you go against or go against the doctor's orders, <laughs> if you will. Look at it in that sense. So... um when you look at the early forming of religion and its connection with medicine, healthcare, and the body, um, when you look at what is a church, it's a body. So we're talking when we look at the body and we're talking about anatomy, um, astrology, the earth's body. All of these things are sciences, and ancient religion or ancient culture, right, was essential. Uh, to teaching these sciences, either through song, dance, praise, and worship, or in everyday uh, work of civilization. So when you look at uh, how time, space, and matter, right, uh, became dogmatic teachings, right, when you understand the science of time, space, and matter, the knowledge of time, space, and matter, and how the witness of matter has become dogma or the, the words 
of God, you have to understand natural law and how matter has failed and succeed in this continuum of time, space, and matter. So the histories are important to, un to the understanding of what the body has been through um, to understand the remedies and how to salvage one's condition. So when we look at um, medicine, nature, and how the teaching of uh, culture, religion, um, taught the deities or the deification process of life forces, elements came about. When you look at just the term day, right? And a deity, dia, the diva, the bar, the queen bee, the spoken word. So when you just look at the, the bar, the spoken word, or to speak, to create, right? And the connection with a deity, a day, when you look at the diva, the devi, and the tongues, the power of the tongues, the seven tongues of fire, the sword of fire, right? The word of God. And the ability of the tongue to curse or bless, right? That duality. That duality of good and evil. Of the power of the tongue. So when you look at um, the deities and the demonization of uh, medicine... It is just th that simple. It is the good and bad of the power of the tongue of creating when you understand uh, the elements of the body. Whether um, it's the earth's body and navigation. So the same, the same doctor who could understand the earth's body to navigate the earth, to know where the aligned temples are, the centers, epicenters are, and the earth, and to navigate the earth along those, that same person would be able to look at the human body and treat the human body with the same knowledge that they have of the earth's body. So when you look at these indiv ancient individuals who were deified and became known as deities, it is because of the knowledge that is still preserved to this day and the symbolism that we see um, with the snake, the serpent, the omens, the, the whispers. So when we look at a god, a deity, divine nature, god, he, attributes of a god, a god as a supreme being or self-existing spirit, a deity, a deity. Deity, a divine nature. So when we look at God, a deity uh, to shine, right? This is where the daylight, right? The day hours, the solar hours. So when you look at a, the solar, a sailor, and the, the use of deities, the uses of nature of God to move within the body, um, can, and how they can correlate uh, the earth body to the human body. So when we look at uh, the diva, the god of divinity in the Hindu religion, right? Um, also wicked spirits, because you got to understand the duality that is between the word, the power of the word. You can curse or bless with spells, with word, with sound. So when you look at the Phoenicians and phonetics, right, it is that ability of sound singing uh, instruments, right, that can um, be good or bad, heal or kill, um, salvage or destroy, 
Um, so when we look at uh, the diva and circadian rhythm, right? The circle roundabout that rhythm. When you look at the cir- circa circadian, circadian, what they call circadian or circadian, right? D De- these deities day, right? When we're talking about um, the consistency of the following of the command of these life forces, they're unchanging. Right, always the same, always doing their function. So, we're talking about a day I command God to shine in a connection with 